Look, I'm from Southside, Jamaica, Queens. I don't like Supreme. I don't like Prem in him. But he lived the way he actually projected himself. His lifestyle is consistent. He was true to it. He never ran on nobody. Just like that. You see what I'm saying? And Jimmy's a different kind of guy. He's telling everybody. Telling everybody. He solved the last 10 years of criminal activity in New York City. It's 10 minutes. The DA said, hold on, chill out, stop. Stop, boy. You're going to make it like that. I don't even work. The DA asked him to stop. Stop, man. You're going to make it like we're not even working here. If you want to know about the man who saw all the crime in New York over the last 10 years in just 10 minutes, his name is Jimmy James Rosemond, henchman. One of the strangest stories in hip-hop history is about Jimmy Henchman. He used to be one of the most feared or dangerous rap guys. Anyway, 50 Cent says that the henchman turned out to be a spy in the end. Still, Jimmy may have been the spark that started the feud between the East Coast and West Coast that ended with the deaths of Biggie and Tupac. Family, bear with me. I'll help you make sense of it all in a moment. To explain, Jimmy was born in Harlem, but grew up in the Vanderveer Gardens apartment building in Flatbush, Brooklyn. His mother raised Jimmy Henchman and his four brothers after she and her husband split up when the kids were very young. Jimmy dropped out of school very quickly, which was a shame. Jim Henchman ran with a group called The Untouchables when he was a young boy in the streets of Old Brooklyn. He was always getting into trouble, even when he was young. Unluckily, he was stuck in a cycle where he kept going to jail for one charge and then being picked up for another charge months after he got out. He was charged with two counts of gun crimes by the time he was 16, and he spent a year on Rikers Island. He was free for less than a year, though. Jimmy was caught again soon for another gun charge. He was lucky that he could post bail for this charge. But after a few months, Jimmy caught a murder case. He finally admitted to having a gun, which got the murder charge dropped. He wasn't going to get away with not serving his time, though. He was given a sentence of five to ten years. But while he was in jail, Jimmy may have found a guide in Richard Moore, a Black Panther leader. Moore now talked Jimmy into going back to school, and Jimmy agreed. Jimmy had an associate's degree by the time he got out of jail in 1988. But don't get the wrong idea, this doesn't mean Jimmy gave up a life of crime. Jimmy Henchman, instead, became a big deal in the drug trade. Some people say that he worked hard in the crack game for about three years. During this time, though, one of Jimmy's friends told him he should work in the music business. That's right, this was right before the golden age of hip-hop, and a rapper named Tupac Shakur was going crazy. While Pac wasn't a big star yet, Everyone knew that he was going to be one of the best soon. Jimmy Henchman's attempt to sign Tupac and become his manager shows how ambitious he was in the music business and how he wanted to spread his impact beyond the streets. Haitian Jack, who is friends with both Jimmy Henchman and Tupac, was very important in setting them up. But the fact that Tupac turned down Henchman's offer highlights a key moment in hip-hop history. Tupac's choice not to work with Henchman was affected by several things, including what Biggie Smalls, also known as the Notorious B.I.G., is said to have said. At the time, Tupac and Biggie were very close friends, and Tupac cared what Biggie thought. Biggie may have been afraid to hang out with Jimmy Henchman because of his bad reputation on the street and the possible dangers that come with Henchman's history in organized crime. This event not only shows how complicated Tupac's relationships were in the hip-hop community, but it also adds to the feud between the East Coast and West Coast that would later turn violent. What happened when Tupac was shot at Quad Studios made things even worse between the East Coast and West Coast hip-hop groups. Tupac's choice to take Jimmy Henchman up on his offer of $7,000 to be on a song by Lil Sean shows how bad things were for him at the time. He needed money for court fees and wanted to be on the song. On the night of the killing at Quad Studios, Tupac, his friend Stretch, and two other friends ran into three attackers in the lobby of the building. After being robbed, he was shot five times. After the shooting, Tupac openly blamed people in the East Coast hip-hop scene for planning it. These people included Biggie Smalls, Sean Puffy Combs, then known as Puff Daddy, and members of Bad Boy Records and Junior MAFIA. The competition between the East Coast and West Coast was stoked by Tupac's claims, 
which made things worse in the hip-hop community. The shooting at Quad Studios was a turning point in hip-hop history. It contributed to the rising tensions that led to the sad deaths of Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G., two of the most important and well-known artists in the genre, because Tupac and Biggie were really good friends before this shooting. Biggie even asked Tupac to be his boss, you know? One of the people Pac thought was responsible for the theft that almost killed him was Jimmy Henchman. Pac made fun of Henchman for this reason on the song Against All Odds. He promised to repay Jimmy's goons on time. I know B is hearing you. I own the world. You can set me up, wet me up, and hear the guns go off, but your tricks will never stop me from talking. Even though Jimmy Henchman kept denying that he had anything to do with the theft of Tupac Shakur's money, the truth came out in the end. In 2011, Dexter Isaac, who worked with Henchman, made a shocking disclosure. Isaac said that Henchman had indeed paid him to rob Tupac at Quad Studios, because Dexter Isaac admitted that Henchman was directly involved in the famous event, it proved Tupac's earlier claims. It became clearer after Isaac's confession what goes on behind the scenes in the hip-hop business and how far some people will go to settle scores or gain power. Isaac and Henchman grew up in Brooklyn together and have been friends since they were teens. Isaac said that people working for Henchman paid him $2,500 to rob Pac. Isaac really did get a good deal. He said that Henchman let them keep all the gold and that the only thing they had to give him back was a certain ring that Henchman wanted to keep to himself. Someone stole gold from Pac that was worth $35,000. When Isaac was robbed, Pac's friend Stretch was with him. Isaac also said that Stretch knew about their plan. Isaac said Stretch was given a quarter brick of crack to lie about his friend. Pac also made sure to insult Stretch on the same track, against all odds. Pac rapped, and that's it for me, lies dead. He changed sides and I think his new friends wanted him dead. Henchman still claimed that he was behind the theft though, even after all of this. He was never charged with shooting that person. That being said, Jimmy Henchman didn't just fight with Pac. And you know what? 50 Cent and Jimmy Henchman never got along either. As you all know, 50 and the game never got along. That's because Henchman used to be the game's boss. Now Henchman thought that the reason his artist and 50 Cent never got along was because the game was doing so well as a single artist. 50 was afraid that the game would be the first G-Unit rapper to do better than him, according to his goons. He also said 50 didn't like the game because he was friends with many of the people 50 was fighting with. Gang members think this is why 50 Cent kicked the game out of G-Unit. But they kept fighting even after. The game left the label. The 14-year-old son of Jimmy Henchman was seen in the streets by Tony Yayo, who works with 50 Cent, and Lodi Mack, who is also a rapper. Two different news sources say that Little Henchman was wearing a Czar Entertainment shirt, and one says that he was wearing a G-Unit shirt. And Czar Entertainment is the marketing company that his dad owned. But Lodi and Yayo tickled his feathers and pressed him over what he was wearing, no matter what shirt he was wearing. Little Henchman was pushed up against the wall, and Yayo is said to have started hitting him. Lodi Mac even gave the boy a pistol to hit him. Both guys were charged with assault, but Tony Yayo's charges were dropped. But that doesn't mean Jimmy's goons didn't try to catch him in other ways. Yayo's mother was shot while she was in the apartment with his sister and niece before he even went to court. They were all lucky that no one was hurt. But Lodi Mac did have to deal with attack charges because of the Little Henchman case. He admitted to serious assault and was given a prison term of a few years. But during this time, Lodi Mac was safer because this beef was getting more dangerous on the streets. Yayo's case was thrown out and his mother's house was shot, but that didn't mean the henchmen were done with him yet. Jimmy's goons still tried to get Tony Yayo and 50 Cent to leave. In the same year, 50 and Yayo were filming the music video for his song All Still Kill with Akon. Henchman chose to stop by the set of the video. Men working for him and his goons showed up with silencers on their guns. On this day though, God was with G-Unit. 
As it turned out, one of henchmen's homies' guns went off by accident right before they got out of the car, so they all had to leave the scene. On the paperwork, and uh, henchmen in the mix supposed to come through, and I guess they gun jammed, but we had God on that side, and they backed out on the head, but we had straps too, and that really was really it. You said they had silencers? Yeah. And this was part of the, the actual report that came out? Yeah. Lucky for everyone, no one died that day because one of henchmen's men didn't know how to use his gun. Though henchman wasn't done yet, even after this event. The sentence for Lodi Mack was over in 2009, and he was shot in the middle of a Bronx street two weeks after he got out. It was thought by everyone that henchman was responsible for the shooting, and this time, he would pay for his sins. As of June 2010, Henchman was being held on charges of dealing cocaine, moving money, and tampering with witnesses. It turns out that Henchman ran a drug business that even El Chapo or Pablo Escobar would be proud of. He led a drug ring that moved drugs from the West Coast to the East Coast. Every year, the ring made more than $11 million. He and his group would send drugs from Los Angeles to New York. Once the drugs were sold, they would send the money from New York back to Los Angeles. The henchmen saved even more money on transportation because they didn't even need to use their own car for this job. They put mustard on everything so that the drug dogs couldn't find anything and sent it through FedEx and UPS. The Rosemond organization was his thugs group, and on October 25, 2013, he was given a life term for this charge. The judge said that his crimes were shocking in how many, how long, and how bad they were. The shooters he paid to kill Lodi Mack turned on him, just when you thought things could not get worse for his goons. In this case, there were more than 35 witnesses. He was found guilty and given a second life term in 2014. Don't feel bad for the henchman, though. Word on the street is that he is also a snitch. It is said that Jimmy Henchman worked with police as an informant and helped catch other drug dealers. This adds another layer of controversy to his reputation. Even though Henchman strongly denied these claims, the claim got support when rapper 50 Cent said similar things. In the criminal world, working with police as an informant is a touchy subject that can lead to charges of betrayal and hurt the trust of friends and family. However, people who are facing major legal consequences may be able to reduce their charges or get a lighter sentence if they cooperate with the police. The claim that henchmen helped catch other drug sellers shows that there is a complicated web of friendships and betrayals in the criminal underworld. Henchman is said to have cooperated, but it's not clear if he did so out of self-preservation or for some other reason. Such acts can have big effects on people and groups doing illegal things. There may never be proof that these claims are true, but they add to the mystery surrounding Jimmy Henchman's criminal actions and his connections in both the music business and the criminal underworld.